Are we streaming? Does that can anyone tell me? We are streaming. We are streaming now. All right. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Good to see you all um, for twenty for our first meeting in twenty twenty two. Just to say, remember, we are streaming. This is recorded. Uh, try and try and remember to say your name when you're speaking. Also, my name is Julian Brazil. I'm chairman of the Development Management Committee, just so that members of the public who might be listening in um, know exactly who you are and what you're saying. Um, just a quick run through of how it will go. Um, the application will be introduced by the case officer. Uh, there will be speakers for, against parish council, local ward members. After each of those has spoken, uh, members of the committee may want to ask questions for clarification. Um, when that's all over, we will then go into a debate and the application will be decided. Uh, so, so that's how it is. And in which case, without further ado, we'll move on to the agenda. So um, agenda item one, the minutes. Are you happy for me? Are they a true record of the meeting as of 15th of December? Are we all OK with that? Thank you very much. Urgent business. I'm not aware of any urgent business division of the agenda. I'm not aware that we need to divide the agenda at any, any stage. Declarations of interest, members. Any declarations of interest? I've got um, 6B, 4942, AOMB. Member of that representative. So that would just on that. On the AOMB. Thank you. That's uh, Councillor Taylor. Thank you. Um, any other members? No. Um, Agenda item five, uh, public participation. Um, there is a list of speakers. Um, they will be called as and when for the relevant case. Um, agenda item six, moving on to the plan planning applications. Um, the first application has been deferred. So we move on to application 094221FUL, the Thatcher's Thurston. Um, Miss Milabassi, welcome. Should have welcomed you first as a, as a new member of the planning team. Welcome. And um, over to you. Thank you. So my name is Catherine Miller-Vassi and I'm a planning officer for the council. So this is the Thatcher's Thurlston. The site location is denoted by the red arrow. You can see a little tiny building there next to the drive. Um, a clearer image with the uh, the block plan as existing, so the red outline around the area of operational development. So the site um, lies beyond the um, neighbourhood plan defined settlement boundary for Thurlston within the AUNB, the undeveloped coast and the heritage coast. There is an existing garage on the site um, there are no changes proposed to the existing vehicular access, which is why it's not included in the red outline. The existing outbuilding is um, not fit for purpose and the applicants say it's too small and poorly maintained. It's barely visible from the highway, as you can see from the lower photo. And uh, you can also see, um, if I can find my pointer, that uh, this is the uh, gateway um, and the application site is beyond this gateway to the right. Um, you can see um, next door there's a uh, detached outbuilding which is more prominent. Um, it's a lot more prominent now because the, the leaves are off the trees. So the proposed replacement detached outbuilding would be used as a garage and a store. The materials would comprise natural slate roofing, hardwood windows and doors, smooth render and timber weatherboarding to the elevations. It would be sited over the existing footprint and would be um, approximately double the footprint of the existing. It would have a lower ridge height, um, the existing ridge height is 4.9 and the proposed is 4.6, so that's a difference of around a third of a metre. The representations uh, include um, some objections mostly concerned with the retention of the existing garage, 
Um, the building is considered by the parish council and others to be worthy of non-designated heritage asset status. Support relates to the existing building not being fit for purpose and not comprising a heritage asset. Uh, none of the statutory consultees have raised any objections. The key issues in this case are that the building is considered by the parish council to be worthy of uh, being designated um, as a heritage asset of some sort. However, our specialist has confirmed that the existing building does not meet this criteria since it has lost its historic connection with the original house building that has now been demolished. There is insufficient intrinsic interest in architectural or construction terms. Although it has a thatched roof and leaded windows, it is of block work construction and therefore it is considered to be of local social interest only. The planning officer assessment um, concludes that the building does not constitute a heritage asset and there are no policy grounds to resist its demolition. The proposed condition or recommended condition is sufficient to record the building to be demolished for local social interest. Although the proposal does have a larger footprint, it would have a lower ridge and uh, it would extend the existing footprint away from the driveway, so it would have a lesser visual impact. The materials and proposed design are acceptable and there is no harm to the visual amenity or protected landscapes perceived. Um, there are a number of uh, conditions recommended, including a use restriction so that it could not be used as an independent unit of accommodation at any time, and it would be ancillary to the host dwelling, which is the thatches, um, and a number of other conditions. So, uh, on balance, um, it would have a neutral impact in terms of uh, the material considerations uh, already mentioned. There would be some employment opportunities during the construction phase, which is considered to have a limited positive impact. Um, no significant or demonstrable um, adverse impacts would arise, and therefore it's considered to uh, represent sustainable development in terms of both the MPPF and the joint local plan. It would be considered to accord with the development plan um, and the MPP as a whole and therefore uh, conditional approval is recommended. Thank you very much. Um, members, any questions for clarification? Councillor Panel. Councillor Guy Panel. Um, the main thrust of the objections to this uh, application seems to be the loss of the existing garage. Uh, it's not a listed building or a conservation area. Is there anything to stop the, the owners demolishing this building without permission? Do they need our permission to demolish this building? No, they don't need permission. So, but the reason it's part of this application is that it being there gives them certain rights as to what they can replace it with. Is that right? Um, the fact that there's an outbuilding there um, establishes the principle for a replacement building. If there was no building there at the moment, it would be a different kettle of fish as to whether they could have a building there or not. But we're not debating whether they can demolish it or not. They have the right to do that. That's right. Thank you very much. Councillor Hodgson. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, I mean, there's a kind of a some estimates going on about sort of the original age presumably if it's a block building it was a replacement for something there previously potentially um is that is that part of the assessment of it being older than originally thought or is it just that it's just an old block building um i can defer to my colleague graham because he's more familiar with history thank you through you chair graham lawrence uh, heritage specialist for south Hamden and west devon councils uh, Councillor Hodgson, the, the building dates from the 1930s when the Thatches was, was built. So the, the interest it's considered to have is that it's uh, an example of the first wave of 
incomers coming into South Hams as a result of car ownership, making it viable for people to have a second home and come and enjoy being in South Hams. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Long, can I just ask a question? There's a request to record the building before sort of demolition. If there's no heritage interest, as you have said, or, you know, that sort of area, why would you request um, the building to be recorded? Uh, that wasn't really a request on my part, it was a suggestion that because of the appreciation that there is locally for the building, that that would be a way of uh, um, ensuring that a record was made of the building. Um, I don't get into detail, but if you look at the hierarchy of assessment of heritage assets, where a heritage asset or something that's considered to be a heritage asset is lost, the bottom line is you have the option of recording it. Now, we could members could decide not to do that but it's it was a suggested option because of the uh, local concern and interest councillor long yeah. can i just sort of um ask you to sort of confirm that the although the building is block work it is the original block work of the 1930s i can't confirm that councillor because i've not been to the building to inspect it internally uh, my assessment has been based on the information provided uh, as part of the application and by the parish council. Okay, um, any more questions, members? No, thank you very much, in which case we'll move on to the speakers. Um, Mr Fairbrass, I know he wanted to do it um, online. Uh, I don't know if, he, if he's there or if he's here. Chair, through you, I've got a statement to read on his behalf. Okay, so we'll just, uh, Mr White will just read out his statement. Thank you, Mr White. Thank you, Chair. I would like to say to the committee that, yes, we can see the building has some charm, but neither the Heritage Officer nor Historic England agreed it was worth any special status. I recall the permission to demolish the original house included the garage. The developer kept it, first for a storage area during the build and then for a new development of a lodge, which he later withdrew at which point I offered to buy the building from him. I respectfully suggest to the committee that due to its poor condition, it's a building with no useful future, whereas the proposed new build will be more in keeping with the new houses, the thatches and sea drift, and will better serve my house and those who live their way into the future. May I draw your attention to the only neighbour, sea drift, who constantly sees the building, gave a very robust comment of support on the planning portal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Obviously, we can't uh, ask Mr. Fairbrass any questions. So, in which case, we will move on to the parish council representative. That's uh, Councillor Crowther. Hello. Welcome again. <laughs> you might as well join the committee. <laughs> um, right. So, you know, you've got three minutes um, from when you start. And then when you've finished, members of the committee may want to ask you a few questions, if that's OK. Um, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Thurston Parish Council objects to this application. We consider that it does not comply with the development plan of the area, that's the JLP and the Thirst Enabled Plan, and that there are no material circumstances that indicate it should be determined otherwise. The existing building is located outside the Thurston settlement boundary within the OMB, the Heritage Coast and the Undeveloped Coast, where development is resisted and only permitted under exceptional circumstances. Previous attempts to extend development in this area have failed, including an attempt to replace the existing building with a two-storey gatehouse and other applications on the adjoining land, the Downs. The present-day Thatchers is in, in the same um, ownership, already has an integral double garage and bin stores, and the log store, the proposed log store, is, would be some distance away. 
Um, second reason, the proposal fails to conserve and enhance the natural beauty of the South Devon AOMB. Unlike the existing locally distinctive arts and crafts thatch building, which contributes to the unique landscape and seascape character and special qualities of the area, the replacement building is double the size and contemporary design with weatherboarding and a grey slate roof. It's not locally distinctive and it doesn't contribute positively to the character of the area in accordance with the relevant Heritage Coast A or B objectives referred to in the JLP. Um, and the third reason, the existing building is of local historic interest. This was recognised in the Council's pre-app advice, which referred to the building, and I quote, a simple yet characterful historic building which makes a contribution to the South Devon AUMB. Officers remain of the view that this building should be retained. The building dates back to the late 20s, early 30s, almost 100 years old when it was used as a motorhome to serve its host dwelling, the original Thatchers. It was designed in the same style as the host building and its neighbour, Greycourt, with a thatch roof and ledge windows. The fact that the original host dwelling no longer exists does not diminish the building's local social historic interest. And that was acknowledged by Historic England and by the, um, the heritage officer. It was a time when only the well-to-do had cars, and it's a poignant reminder of days gone by when cars were significantly smaller. The applicant's ecological appraisal states that the thatch was in good condition, sealing well at the wall tops, and we understand it was replaced only five years ago. Suggested advice at the pre-app to retain and adapt the building were refused. In terms of material considerations, we do not accept this as a like-for-like -like replacement garage. It's not the same size and design as the existing building, and it's used for storage. Any garage used to house a motor vehicle was abandoned some 70 years ago. And lastly, the building is not within the residential curtilage of the new dwelling known as the Thatchers, and was specifically removed from the approved application to prevent the future extension of the garden area and beyond the settlement boundary. By conditioning the building to the Thatchers, we are concerned that the present application will circumvent the original planning permission, become part of the curtilage, and open up this area of open countryside outside the settlement boundary to future residential development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Crowther. Went over time there a bit, but I'll do this in the way. Um, members, any questions? Councillor Crowther. Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you, Councillor Crowther. Um, could you just sort of um, give a little bit more background to what you feel is the importance of the local historic interest of this building and how it fits in? Because obviously there has been comment from the Councilstone Heritage Officer that because the original statues was demolished, that this standing on its own somehow loses that importance. But obviously the parish places great importance to it. Thank you. Um, they didn't. They didn't say it was not of local importance. They only said in the national context. So they were only talking about grade two listing. Um, we have many. You know, I mean, but we can still list it in our neighbour plan, and indeed we we could consider. But it was always. That, but all the comments in the um, from historic England um, were that it was that it could well be of local significance, which we claim it is. The, the, there's a bit more to it in that it was a particular family that owned it and they have a stained glass window in the church and there's, you know, there were some connections locally and there's this house called Greycott behind, which is in the same style. So it, it's, and it's also within the setting of the conservation area and um, listed buildings. It's not in the conservation area, but it's within the setting. So... Our view is to, to retain it. OK, thank you. We have one more, one more point. Um, you raised the point about uh, the condition. Obviously, the applicant has also put a sort of contrary statement about um, the condition of the building. There seems more, why is that a conflict? The, we were going on the ecological appraisal, which actually says, and I quoted it, that it was in, that thatch was in good condition. Um, I haven't seen the inside of the building either, but that's what it says, and it 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 deals with it in the second or third paragraph of the report. 
Um, we also know that from local residents that Thatch was replaced about five years ago. Okay, thank you. Any more questions, members? No? Thank you very much, Councillor Crowther. Nice to see you again. Um, and so now we'll move to the ward members. Um, Councillor Pearce, do you want to go first? Yeah. Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you. Oh, okay. Um, good morning. Um, I'm Councillor Judy Pearce, and I'm the other ward member in Thurston. You have one on the committee. Um, you, you're probably wondering what all the fuss is about with this one, or um, perhaps by now you have gathered that there is um, a good deal to say about it, because just replacing a garage with another garage or storage building does not seem like a huge deal. But in fact, there is quite a lot of significance in this one. Um, the pre-application advice from, um, from the officer was to retain the old building, but maybe put an extension on behind it. Now, the application is for a garage and store, but although this building was a garage, the present applicant has never used it as a garage for obvious reasons, because it's not the right size to um, be used as a garage. And I actually um, don't think, although I can't say for certain, that he is going to use the new building as a garage, but more as a store. Now, I have been inside this building and it is true that it was rethatched about five years ago. And on the inside, the thatch is in really good condition. The building has been let go a bit. But on the inside, the window frames are in good condition. And it is block work. But I would suggest it's the original block work. I don't know when concrete blocks started. But I think the Romans used them. So I don't think that prevents it from being an old building. Um, it is unique to Thurston in that the oldest residents in the village um, attest to it being probably the first garage that was ever built in Thurston um, for a car um, rather than a cart or a carriage. So from that point of view, it probably is notable and worthy of record. Now, uh, I think we've, we've probably done the historic bit almost to death, but I'd like to concentrate on the footprint and what it's going to do. If the original pre out advice had been um, taken up, then nothing would have been disturbed very much from what you saw on the site inspection because there is already the bank is already cut into and extended at the back of the garage. If this is carried out, a lot of the bank will have to be dug into, and the red line as presently drawn, I don't think hardly. Um, accounts for the width of the building, and it might be useful to have that up on the screen so you can look at it. The building is going to be almost twice as wide um, as it is now and will involve the bank being cut into and shelved off, as was shown in the um, end view of the garage that was also put up uh, during the um, presentation from the officer. This will mean there will be the loss of two of the ancient apple trees, which you saw on the site inspection, in the orchard behind, because the land rises quite steeply. Um, I'm just looking down my notes to see what also what I also need to say. Um, I think I think the point. That the, um, thank you. Yes. Now you can see the red line behind the arrow. That hardly accounts for the garage being nearly twice as wide and the bank being shelved off. So I think there's actually going to be more disturbance in the orchard than that red line would suggest. Um, and that's the point I'm trying to get across to you. And remember that outside, the beyond the drive, is in the undeveloped coast, the, um, the AONB and... Um, and the heritage, well, it's, it's all heritage coast around, around us, but, um, but it is undeveloped coast. Therefore, there is a presumption against extra development. And I would, I would submit that cutting into the bank will be harmful. Um, the alternative is that this land becomes domestic curtilage. Now, I think that some um, 
Councillor Crowther has made it perfectly obvious why that isn't a good idea. Um, so what I'm saying to you members is don't take this, this one on face value. Please consider it very carefully. I think um, a good case has been made by Councillor Crowther why it should be refused, but obviously the decision is up to you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Pearce. Um, members, any questions for Councillor Pearce? No, in which case, uh, Councillor Long as the other local ward member. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Long. Um, I think you've heard quite clearly from the Parish Council their views in not just the historic terms, but the questions about the construction and the size. I think you have to also look at the pre-application advice, and that was interesting that that has actually not been um, considered by the um, by the applicant. But the the fact that pre-application advice the building should be retained, and that it was a characterful historic building. I think the other thing to look at is the question as to whether it is like for like, which has been raised. We still need to focus on the importance and uniqueness of this for Thurlston and the fact that it is of local interest and the sort of impact of its demolition in losing something like that. I think it is worth looking that it's doubled in size um, with an extensive increase in the roof size. And it is therefore sort of impactful, even if the ridge line drops by 30 centimetres, a third of a metre. So I think all of these points need to be considered. And I think Councillor Pierce has raised the point about the sort of potential for future development. Um, but I think importantly, the parish council has shown the level of importance that this building is for the local community. Um, I was pleased that a, large, a number of the members of the committee were there to sort of view it. And I think it needed to be viewed on site. And you've seen extensive documentation and discussion. Mr Chairman, I'd like to leave that my comments at this point and hear from other members of the committee, particularly those who attended the site. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Long. Um, any questions for Councillor Long? Um, no, in which case we move... Oh, sorry, Councillor, Councillor Rowe. Yes, thank you, uh, Councillor Rosemary Rowe. Um, I'm sorry I did do the site inspection on Monday, but I was at the dentist, which was probably not as uh, likeable as actually been on a site inspection. And I, and I couldn't cancel my appointment because you won't get another one for another three months. So anyway, um, the point I'd like to ask is that there is no reason at all why this garage could not be demolished without any planning application whatsoever. Is that correct or not, please? Um, yeah. Mr. Weimer, do you want to answer that? Or, or? I don't, I, um, that's correct, yes, Councillor. It's correct. It can be demolished. Thank you. So, yes. Okay, Councillor Rowe. Right, we're moving to debate now. Um, I mean, feel free to ask questions as well as, as we go through that. Uh, Councillor Kemp, did you want to? Uh, yeah, Councillor Kemp, is it possible to put any protection on that building because I think it is of uh, significance and and is should be re retained as the as a monument really to to that which we've already lost to um smoke glass and composite so is it possible to protect that building at all because they're obviously letting it go yeah I think if you read the heritage report from our heritage officer um and, and maybe mr lawrence you might want to um just to make comments on that but i think the feeling is is, is that although it is of is just of a local significance and may but have why is that any less important than any other significance well because because i think the problem they've got is that you'd end up listing every single building in the whole country so that's the problem that there is and they have to draw the line somewhere and this in their view, um, you know, English heritage or whatever, just not cross the criteria to make it worth listing. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll just over to, hand over to yeah. Mr Lawrence so you can articulate that better than me. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll just give a very quick summary uh, for members. Um, there are three ways that the planning policy guidance identifies in which uh, a non-designated heritage asset can be identified. One is by the local authority, 
through a local list. One is by the local community through their neighbourhood plan. Now, Thilson has a neighbourhood plan with a list on it, and this building is not included. Um, we elected to go down the route of having uh, a flowchart and a methodology in our supplementary planning document, which is an adopted supplement to the joint local plan. That, in turn, refers to the Historic England Guidance Note on um, local listing. And if I could just run through some of the reasoning that this is the reasoning that I applied. Um, the criteria for local heritage listing include age. Well, this is not a building of great age, although it is of some age, but that limits its significance. Rarity. It is a rare example of this particular building type. That's absolutely acknowledged, but only very local interest. Architectural and historic interest and arch artistic interest. Well, it's got a thatched roof, but otherwise, and it's got windows with a bit of lead in. Otherwise, it's a pretty basic building. It's not like a, a Lutchen's artistic expression of uh, its time. Group value. I think this is very significant. It has no group value any longer because the buildings that were built with it at the time have gone. So that means it has no relationship with any other heritage assets. It's not visible from the conservation area or for, within the setting of the listed buildings. There's no archaeological interest. In terms of historic interest, that Historic England refer to significant historical associations. That's usually with quite famous people. Now, I fully accept that there is an association with a well-known local family. But again, that makes this a very specifically local interest. And finally, does it have landmark status? Well, no, because it's not visible from the public footpath, which is the other side of the ridge. It's not visible really from the street or from any other significant vantage point. You know, if a building like this were, let's say for argument's sake, a bus stop in the middle of the village that people had been using and passed by every day, then absolutely it would merit uh, um, identification as a non-designated heritage asset. But even then, identification as a non-designated heritage asset does not of itself provide protection. Um, the thing protecting this building from being demolished is the fact that if it was gone, it was gone, and that the, the, there would be no justification for a new building, I suspect, in the AOMB, etc. So I hope that helps. Yeah, Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, are you you all right there, Councillor Kent? Yeah, I'm through it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, Councillor Abbott. Sorry, microphone. Oh, that's it. Councillor Abbott. Something has been made of the doubling of size of this garage, um, but that doesn't appear to be to be the case. Uh, both in the, uh, I wonder if we could bring up the the, the plan, please. Um, both for the way it cuts into the bank to the north, it doesn't seem to cut in very far. We were, we were guided to uh, some posts um, uh, when we were on the site visit, and they seem to be just a short way to the north on, on the line. of. The, and in fact, the extension there, if it's the blue line, appears to be to the west more than to, although I don't understand that. Is it an L shape or? Um, so we need to ignore the blue, the blue dashed line because that was um, a previous uh, proposal okay. um so so it's not really pertinent now um so what what they've proposed currently is to extend a bit could you use your cursor please so we we ignore this blue line because that's a previous iteration so currently um we're looking at um this solid black line Yes. which would be um, the uh, elevation to the left-hand side um, and this line here. So that would be the extended footprint. This bit over here, which is going into the bank, um, is an overhang. So that would be the, the log store. I see, and the dotted line inside. Sorry, go back one. So if I could just show you there. 
can you see this bit bottom left of the of the page that's um an open log store um and, and this is where where the bank would be dug out just here so yes we ignore this line that was a previous iteration to go back please so the current garage is the dotted line inside there. This bit. Line. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abbott. Um, just to, yeah, to, if you turn your yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just to, just remind members that that unfortunately you. You can't have two people with their mics on at the same time, even if you're in discussion. You have to sort of turn it on and off as you go, because you, otherwise you get this sort of weird feedback. Um, anyway, right. So we're into debate now. Councillor Long. Yeah, or did Councillor Foss? Yeah, Councillor Foss. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I'm... <laughs> This is one of those we're going to have difficulty with. Of course we are, because it's what we would call looking at it as a nice little building. But we've already been told it's got no protection and it could be demolished tomorrow. Um, what did interest me was we got an application for another garage. And if you remember, for those of us who were on site, when we went along, the owner opened up the double garage that he's already got alongside the house. And what was it full of? What most garages in the South Hams are full of? Junk doesn't see a car inside it. So I haven't got as much sympathy for the application as I might. But having said all that, um, I've got great difficulty in finding anything that we can say you can't have it. Um, you know, it, and I want to hear what others were saying, but, I'm, you know, you, it, it, we're in one of those situations that we're having a great difficulty in finding something. We could, could we... Um, have conditions on it like i think is the application for garage and store is that the wording yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah okay right. so that's um, the case we can't we can't condition it saying it can only be used for a garage because um all i can see is another place for some more junk and i mean I'm, I'm as bad i've got a double garage it's full of junk so i can't really talk but um <laughs> you understand where i'm coming from there's another building when there's already a double garage attached to a modern house and for the on the heritage side, I think we lost a lot of any argument on the heritage side when the original house was knocked down and we've got a very modern house, which I must admit, um, it, I would have thought was better off in Sulcum rather than in Thurston, to be quite blunt, uh, to see it amongst some of the other houses around. It, it was very stark and very, very modern. Um, I don't think if it was in front of me in, in this committee, I would have uh, voted for um, permission, but it's there. Um, and, yeah, I, I, the difficulty I have is I understand the local concern about uh, l losing what on the front of it is a very nice little old building, and it's got some history. But uh, from what we've been told, there's not very much we can do about it. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Hodgson. Uh, yeah, Captain Hodgson. I think there's a question of scale here, and as has been pointed out, the sort of the size is quite a difference. But it won't be just the size that will be much more kind of obvious. It will also be the change in the roof. At the moment, that thatch sits well into the landscape. It also sits well into the surrounding heritage buildings. And I think, as has been pointed out, you know, the 1930s was an interesting, uh, you know, as this is associated with the 1930s, which was an interesting time for this area because there's quite a lot of representation of that period the, the arts and crafts and it's important that we kind of remember our history i mean there's we tend to sort of hold on to things that are medieval and maybe this was kind of a bit of a, a copy of, of medieval scale and, and size but nevertheless it struck me i mean and for those of you who didn't realize i did actually go to that site meeting i just couldn't find it very as quick as everybody else and so i did have a good look round and um it was, I, I just thought it sat well in its position. It sat really well just inside there. There's that peep, that kind of scale. If there was a much bigger building there, it would be much more kind of eye-catching and not necessarily sort of so 
as, as even the applicant has said, you know, the charm. It is charming, that little building. And I think those are the things that we, you know, we, we lose at our peril because once the balance goes between allowing those buildings to be replaced by very modern buildings, and as has been said, because I actually also saw the modern building because that's where I was, around the other end. Um, it's, I think it's this whole thing of change. At some point, the balance is lost between what we look, look at as a place full of charm and that hangs together well and represents you know, the, you know, the passage of time in a, ver in a very soft way, as opposed to much bigger buildings that really jar and are much more dominant in, albeit, you know, a very small part of landscape. And so I think I would actually move refusal um, on the basis that um, of heritage, heritage value. I know it's not, um, it's not a designated asset, but I would suggest that the perhaps the parish council think um, about listing it as part of a review of their neighbourhood plan if they get the opportunity as something of value in the area. I think the social heritage value is very important. The connection has been made with the window in the church. And um, I'm sure there's wording that we can find to actually support refusal. I know it's a bit on the edge, but I think, you know, it has value, that building. And certainly a new building wouldn't be getting um, permission if there wasn't another building there. So it's being used as a demolition site rather than as a um, as a sort of something that is in favour for the new building itself. I think, you know, if that, as has been said already, if that building, the new building was coming before us without that building to be demolished and provide a, a building site, then it wouldn't, it would be refused. And I think we can look at it from that point of view as well. So I, I moved refusal. Um, Councillor Foss, you just wanted a quick question. Yeah, I just want a quick question. If we turn, uh, uh, um, Mr. Weimer, I think if we turned it down and said no, we didn't give permission, there would be nothing to stop the applicant knocking it down tomorrow, would there? No. No. No, no we've, we've ascertained that. Um, I've got a few questions coming up now. Uh, Councillor Long. Um, thank you, Chairman. I, I, uh, Councillor Hodgson has done a lot of things that I was going to say, which I'm grateful for, um, and I would second her um, proposal for refusal. I think there are, you know, clearly the historical aspects are very important for the area. And I, you know, it's unfortunate that um, it wasn't picked up um, during the neighbourhood plan. But um, when you consider the amount of work that goes in from volunteers to put a neighbourhood plan together, certain buildings are going to be missed. And I don't think, you know, um, this is a reason. I think, you know, every time an iteration of neighbourhood plan goes through, I'm sure additional items like this would be picked up. I think it is important, as has been said, that there is social, there is um, historic and heritage um, interest in it. It is disappointing that the, as the, um, it, as has been said, that the garage has lost its context with the parent buildings. But that doesn't, in my terms, you know, sort of really reduce its um, value because in itself, as has been said, it's, you know, it is a particular <clears throat> development of its time and is, I believe, fairly significant. And that's reason why it's a local historic interest. But I think also the point is that what is going into that um, position is considerably bigger. It has a larger roof line. And I think the thing is that with the log store, the way it sort of looks on the plans, and I think um, Councillor Abbott sort of um, identified and picked this up, the extent of the roof does go out. It is almost twice the size of the current building. It will be a pretty uh, modern, bog-standard um, render, slate roof, um, won't make a contribution. And I think one of the things that was picked up is by the... Um, Parish Council is the concern that um, that the building itself is not within the residential curtilage um, of the thatches um, and was specifically removed from the approved application for that to prevent the future extension of the garden area. And I think that um, <coughs> the problem is that there is a concern that it could become part of the curtilage by this planning commission and open up this area of open countryside for further development. So, you know, I can understand the parish council's concern that this is a bit of a Trojan horse for future residential development in the area. So I think there are a number of points that are there. I, I firmly believe that something like this, just because 
it cannot be observed, um, why should it sort of qualify for demolition? There are a lot of um, heritage assets, historic interest um, buildings out there, even of a small scale like this, that do warrant protection and do make a significant contribution to the you know, social and heritage of the area, the interest of the area, and then writes the story of an area. And the more we lose and we end up with, um, dare I say, potentially bland modern buildings, they are not going to make a contribution apart from people in the future saying, God, there was no real um, interest in building properly, was there, at that time? Or people will look at things, you know, in that way. Uh, it saddens me that um, people don't wish to retain something like this. And I think as a planning committee, we should be standing by small buildings like this and standing by the uh, parish council's wish that it be retained. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, just a couple of points on that. First of all, any application to change the, of use that would have to come before planning committee. So you can't refuse something because they might do something in the future that you don't like. Uh, and secondly, I'm very doubtful that you can retrospectively put things into the neighbourhood plan that don't quite suit you at this particular time now that may be a mistake that they've made and things like that but again i don't think you could use that as an argument as to why this should be refused it's not part of the neighborhood plan and as such that does not count um right i've got councillor panel and then councillor kemp thank you chair um yes i do have sympathy with the uh local residents and it is a charming building but we've heard that it could be demolished tomorrow even if we reject this application uh, i have a lot of time for the advice from our officers i think uh, on balance uh, there are no strong reasons why this should be turned down we can't protect the building itself you've heard that i would then propose an amendment that we approve this application thank you councillor and councillor kent Hello. Um, would it be possible to condition it to retain the thatch? No. And it wouldn't be possible to um, cut less into the bank so as to avoid no, we, using we, those we, trees? No, no. We are dealing with the application as is before us, and that is what we're deciding. If you find that unacceptable, you vote against it. If you're OK with it, or you can't think of a planning reason why to refuse it, you will have to support it. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification, Chair. Sorry, Councillor Abbott. Councillor Abbott, uh, I, I second the motion to um, for, for conditional approval. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have, and I'll take, we've got a, a proposal to refuse the application and that's been seconded and that came in first, so I'll take that first. That's against officer recommendation. Um, I'd, I'd like to have reasons, and during the reasons, I'd like to caution just about using as a heritage asset, because we've heard quite clearly for both from English Heritage and from our heritage officer that although there are some merits to this building, it doesn't cross enough criteria to make that that it would be listed e either as well listed as a listed building or or designated as an as a um, uh, as a non-heritage asset for the local community. I think that's the phrasing. Um, the one condition that is on there is that they do take pictures of it so that it will be, in that sense, it will be saving prosperity. So, I, I mean, you can put it in if you like. I mean, I would caution against it because I think that the advice that we've been given, that it doesn't qualify for that. I think there are reasons, possibly, that is the increase in footprint, um, it's a replacement building in the countryside. We do have policies that say, but then the, the flip side of that is that in order for this to be a functional building, does it need to be bigger? Um, you know, does it need to, if you're going to put a garage in it, and I appreciate what Councillor Foss was saying about garages aren't really garages, but um, I think that might be a, you know, that's what uh, uh, the applicant would argue, presumably. In, in the, Anyway, enough from me. Um, Councillor Hodgson, do you want to just, just reiterate the reasons for refusal? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I just wanted to actually sort of 
point out that we're kind of so busy looking at what we're losing, rather, potentially losing rather than what's being put before us. I think we should focus a little bit on that. And I think just to add to my refusal to refusal is the impact of the new building on the AONB, which it sits within, because it's not kind of a done deal that just because you've got a building site that you can go ahead. Um, so it's a, it's a, it, the, um, it's much more visual in the AONB. It is, um, um, and it's it's the loss of a building that has social local value, so social heritage value. Is that good enough? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think so, that it's got a negative impact on the AOMB and the Heritage Coast. Um, it's uh, increase in footprint, and uh, the other reason is because of the loss of a uh, distinctive local building although I'm 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 myself I'm I'd be very wary of putting that one in but if you want to put that in as the proposer and seconder then so be it I mean it's not for me to to say you can't um I'm just going to go to Mr Wymer first thank you I, I, it would be helpful if we could have a little bit more information on precisely what is about what is it what is it about the proposal that has a negative impact on the air and the heritage coast Councillor Hodgson Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I would suggest it's the um, it's the it's the size and scale in that immediate location. Thank you. Anything about the materials? Um, I, the cladding. What is the cladding? Is it? Um, it was smooth when, uh, render and timber weatherboarding. Timber weatherboarding. Okay. So I don't, I don't know if you. <laughs> is that okay? We all feel that that would be detrimental. Well, it's it's out of the it's it's not in keeping with the local vernacular, and it's um, also the slate roof is much more visually um, intrusive than the thatch, which is virtually invisible. Okay, right. In which case, are you happy with those, Mr. Weimer? I'm really nervous about basically saying slate roof is unacceptable in the South Ham. <laughs> Given that most of the times we're saying that is absolutely local vernacular and we've we put on a reasonable refusal, the use of a slave roof isn't local vernacular would really make me nervous. Chairman, is it, could we say, because it is, it is a fairly extensive uh, roof because you've got one side is particularly pitched almost right down to the bank. It's the extent and scale of the um, exposure of the roof. You know, it is a fairly substantial roof. For a okay, so the scale, the scale and massing of the building is okay. I think, I think what Mr. Wyman is saying is that slate roofs are part of the South Devon vernacular. The only thing I would say is obviously it was a thatch and now it's going to be a slate roof and people may feel that a slate roof is less, is less appealing than a thatched roof. The point I was making, Chair, really, was that a thatch doesn't reflect, so it sort of disappears into the brown, into the colour of the landscape, whereas a slate roof will catch the light, so you actually see it more. It's not because it's wrong, but you're just more, it's more yeah, visually I think, intrusive I or think you're visually aware. clutching at straws there. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. OK, right, anyway, look, I think we've got a general idea. Um, I mean, you, you've heard that Mr Wymer's slightly nervous about some of those reasons. Um, uh, I, I mean, I personally will be voting against um, refusal because I, I, I think that particularly with the original house having been knocked down, that would be rather perverse if we defend the saving of this, but we've allowed the original house to be knocked down. Um, and I just, you know, if the original house was there, then, then, then maybe. But the fact that that's gone, um, to then, then say we can't allow the, 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 the garage to be just um, changed, I, I, I think would be look rather odd. But anyway, so that's that's my view. Um, right, members. Uh, so can I have a show of hands for all those in favour of refusal, which is against the officer recommendation? That is two in favour. Thank you, Chair. And those against refusal? Nine against. Thank you, Chair. We've then got a proposal for um, conditional approval as per the officer recommendation. That's by Councillor Panel and seconded by Councillor Abbott. 
So can I have a show of hands, all those in favour of conditional approval, please show. That is eight in favour of approval. Thank you, Chair. And those against? Two against, thank you, Chair. No, three. Oh, three, Councillor Kent. Apologies, three against. Any abstentions? With one, one abstention. abstention. Thank you. OK, so that application is approved. Thank you, members. We'll just take uh, a quick five minute break uh, and then back here. What time is it now? It is. Yeah, so just after 11, if you could be back here, please. Thank you.
back. Yep, excellent. Um, hi, Mr. Jackson. Nice to see you. Yeah, good. <laughs> 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 um, it's right, are we we are on. The, we're streaming. We are streaming again now. Right. Okay. In which case, we will move straight on to the next agenda item six C. Uh, that's thirty five zero seven twenty one. Um, uh, Miss Harahane. Yeah. yeah. You okay? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. yeah we are good to go. All right. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, good morning. So this application is um, in Ivy Bridge, just to the south of the A38 between Ermington Road and the Recycling Centre. Um, just so you can see the red line. So with uh, just uh, above the site, above the red line, there are um, storage containers uh, within the the sort of the same land as the site they're proposed they're they're going to stay as they are and the application only relates to the vacant area of site um to the west so you can just see in the sort of the right hand side of that uh, photo there's some storage containers the application site is that uh, empty fenced off area of land that you can see in the photo um so just to update members um before i start we uh, received a highways objection um, so too, too recently to uh, get into the report. So initially there was no objection subject to condition. Um, highways are now objecting for the two reasons on the uh, slide, but Mr Jackson is here so he can uh, go into that in a bit more detail and sort of answer any questions um, at the end of this for you. Uh, so the, um, the, kind of the main basis of the application is the applicant FCC Environment Limited uh, have increased the number of waste collection vehicles that they are operating to try and improve their service. Um, they don't have enough space within their existing site to park all of the additional lorries that they need. So they are now seeking to change the use of this area of land to allow for parking uh, of the additional collection lorries. We have had a number of objections most of which were from members of Ivy Bridge Tennis Club, which is on the other side of the road to this site. Um, I think there's been some historic problems with uh, uh, waste staff parking in the tennis um, in the tennis club car park, um, and this has obviously caused some friction. Um, following all these objections, the applicants submitted uh, some additional information, um, namely this parking plan, uh, which shows that they can accommodate the collection vehicles and staff parking on the site. Um, they've also done a parking statement where they've laid out kind of the, the various things that they're doing and have done to try and resolve these issues. So um, uh, having a banksman on the site so that the cars and the lorries are kind of arriving and leaving safely, um, communication with the tennis club and things like that. Um, I would emphasise that parking disputes outside of the site aren't material planning considerations. Obviously, we can't control where people park outside of the site. But um, hopefully the fact that we've got this additional plan and this extra information about parking should avoid any sort of more civil disputes, uh, just as a bit of an aside. <laughs> um, so to uh, just in terms of other matters, there's no physical changes to the landscape. Um, there will be a little bit of additional fencing just to completely secure the site, but this will match the existing black fencing. Um, a condition suggests that any external lighting be agreed if it's required. Um, there's an existing access to the site for uh, cars and lorries, um, so, so that would just be used. Uh, it's quite an industrial site, um, so there's no residences sort of within the vicinity of the site uh, to impact on amenity. And the site will be used for parking only, so vehicles will be maintained, repaired, off-site and environmental health have no concerns with the application um, and therefore it's recommended for conditional approval. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harahane. Um, members, got to Councillor Panel and then Councillor Abbott. Uh, thank you, Councillor Guy Panel. Just one quick one. Can you show me the site plan again with the access? Because I'm a bit confused where the gates, because that's 
So oh, you I can, can see, see my, to row, the, Yeah, so you, you come in up here, if you can see my cursor. And that's the turning into the recycling yeah, centre. Yeah, so you would go up here right to the recycling up there. centre, as I I see. here, and then the access gates are in here. Right, that's fine. That's what okay. I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abbott. Right. Okay, well, I'll take Councillor Hodgson first while that's happening. Councillor Hodgson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, I just wondered really why the County Highways Authority initially said they had no objections subject to vehicle access being restricted to the main recycling centre access road only. I mean, I wonder why it's come back. Normally, you know, once it goes, it comes back with one. Of, so is, was something changed in the application that changed that view from the County Highways Authority? Um, in terms of what nothing's changed in the application, um, it was submitted like this. As I say, the, the this parking layout that's on screen was submitted as additional information, but the, the red line, the access, everything remained the same. Um, so that might be a question for Mr. Jackson. So basically, it was the parking layout that changed. Is that it? Didn't change. It was just clarified before. The red line just, was just kind of around the site, um, and then we asked for information to show kind of more specifically how it was laid out. Okay, thank you. OK, I, I think this might be a good opportunity for Mr Jackson, if you'd like to, to go through in detail your, your objection here. Yep. Um, so dealing with that first question, I suppose the answer is further information was submitted um, by the applicant uh, just before Christmas. Um, and uh, on return from annual leave, um, I picked it up in detail and started looking at it and uh, could see that um, not only was it going to be um, a, a kind of site for uh, parking of refuse lorries, but also staff would be parking there as well. Um, and the numbers were identified in the further information, which um, which was a bit of a concern. So, um, in principle, um, the Highway Authority are supportive of what's being proposed here. Um, just just to clarify that, it's it's more to do with. Um, the MPPF policies basically state that um, development uh, should give appropriate opportunities to promote sustainable transport modes to any major development um, and um, provide safe and suitable access at the same time. And in that context, it basically goes on to say under paragraph 112 um, that we should be giving pedestrians, cyclists priority over the motor vehicle. So um, the Highway Authority has um, looked at it and thought, well, it's not the greatest site for achieving that um, and it could be enhanced upon. So we've asked for a footway to be provided to link back to um, pretty much where the underpass is um, already in existence to the tennis club um, so that um, people can walk to and from the built-up area of Ivy Bridge to the site um, and also there are shower facilities at the main depot um, which is uh, the on the built-up area side of the site um, that are associated to the staff so there would be opportunities for people to cycle to work um, as well because you don't really want to be sat in a a refuse lorry for 12 hour shift or eight hour shift if you've just cycled a fairly significant distance you want to have a shower before you get in that vehicle for the sake of your colleagues um and um we've just asked for additional uh, information um obviously it's late in the day and i can only apologize for that but um we've asked for a scheme to be drawn up to show a footway leading back to the existing footway network so that there is safe and suitable access provided to the site. Um, the numbers provided of this number of staff that are likely to be parking on the site uh, between uh, around about 35 to 40. So it's not an insignificant number of staff that will be needing to gain access. And then you've also got the existing staff that are already using the waste transfer facility that would benefit from that as well. Um, thank you. Yeah, there's a few questions come up, if you're okay with that. Uh, Councillor Hodson, then I'll go to Councillor Abbott. Thank you. So just if I could come back then, it's given that you've raised an objection, um, are we trying to sort of support this objection, you know, get around this objection by bringing more um, conditions into this application if it was to be passed? 
or are we sort of suggesting maybe it should be withdrawn and that sorted out before and then it comes back? Is this is this objection too big for what we've got before us? Um, Mr. Weimer, the Southampton's officer view is that the application is acceptable as it stands. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abbott, did you want to? Thank you. I have a few questions. First one is is conceptual. <clears throat> I remember this the original FCC application coming before this committee maybe two years ago. And we were hardly given the opportunity to discuss this at all uh, because it was a Devon County Council application and therefore it was going to go through. How does this one relate to the other one? How, how come we can even discuss this? Mr Weimer, again. It's a, it's a good, good question. Councillor, I think, am I right in thinking that the application you're referring to is the the waste transfer facility on the, the site, just the other side of the slip road? No. The, that is clearly a county matter because it's, it is fundamentally to deal with um, waste disposal. The, this, this application, I think, is not quite so clear cut in that it is for a parking area. Um, and there is, I think there's an argument to say it could be um, a Devon County application. There's also an argument to say it's a district application. And I don't think the county have come to us and said, you shouldn't be dealing with this. It's a, it's a county matter. So I'm, I'm comfortable that it's something that we can, we can determine. Well, keeps on going off, Councillor Abbott. Sorry, Councillor Abbott. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Just turned it off. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, okay. Um, of course, the, the first one didn't work because it was so poorly designed uh, that I would have thought this was integral, integral to the design of uh, and the working of, of waste collection in the South Hams. But be that as it may, um, I. So um, now questions to the two of you, really, because. Um, one of the objections to the traffic going into the recycling point is that it's a mix of cars and lorries. Maybe one of you could just say something about that. Do you mean um, in terms of traffic going up to the recycling yeah. centre? So I think um, something that the um, applicant noted in their parking statement, which I think is quite valid, is the times of day that this site will actually be used. Because essentially you'll have in the morning, I think, depends on what time of year it is. But first light, you get the, the staff arriving, mm -hmm. going out in the lorries yeah. all day before the recycling centre is open. Mm -hmm. And the same coming back, there's actually only going to be quite a, a sort of a small time period where uh, cars and lorries are entering and accessing this site. Yeah, In the afternoon, more problem. Um, Potentially, um, but as I say, in terms of like the actual, you know, sort of time spell in which you're going to be having significant traffic going to both is going to be very small. It's not like this site's going to be kind of being no. accessed, you know, sort of in and out all day. It's going to be kind of a chunk in the morning and a chunk yeah. in the afternoon when they finish and when they start. Thank you. On this particular slide that's up, um, unlike uh, applications for the housing estates we have in Ivy Bridge, this shows no turning of vehicles moving into spaces. Is this an FCC drawing? Um, or is it Devon County County? FCC? Yeah, well, there we are then. <laughs> um, uh, and, the, and the other one of the lorries you might have seen in the paperwork is a picture of lots of lorries. Um, so at least they can do cut and paste. Um, but nowhere is there any tracking of vehicles or the movement of cars being parked separately to the um, to the collection lorries, which include the space up there in the north as well. So there's going to have to be some sort of um, jiggery pokery to move the vehicles around to allow them in, into those apparently designated parking spaces. Um, so I just wish they produced some decent diagrams um, on pedestrian access. The road to the north of the site uh, is the end of the, is the slipway from the A38. 
So, Mr. Jackson, where are the pedestrians going to cross? Where is the footpath going to be? So, um, there's a little pedestrian den you can see in the north, and there's the northwest side. On the oh, corner. that little corner thing, that's what that is. Pedestrian. Oh, it saves asking so that question. That, that could be utilised mm. as an entrance start. Um, and then you could just simply run the footway across the top of the slipway, just near the midway line on the slipway. So the traffic speeds would be fairly slow because of the midway mm. line. Yeah. Um, there's adequate visibility back down. There is. The yeah. Um, and uh, for a crossing point in that locality, there's options then. You could, so you could either take the footway across the front of the island, mm. which is in existence currently, or you could. Um, around the back of the island where mm. currently there are some stone boulders um, located on the verge. I've got one more. <laughs> Thank you. That suits the staff. What we what we had as a problem um, at the end of the collection of the brown bins was that pedestrians wanted to walk in towing a brown bin behind them. So an adventure carried out by a town councillor. Um, and uh, they walked from Ivy Bridge. I don't know which where they crossed the A38, but they ended up wanting to go into the um, recycling centre. Now, if the footpath was to the west of the site rather than in that corner, that would at least get a pedestrian safely to the entrance of the recycling centre. There's a problem after that, of course, that there's no pedestrian access to the recycling centre itself, even though uh, we are trying to favour pedestrians over cars. Yep, that's acknowledged. Um, but we are we have an application in front of us um, that we are considering okay. on its own merits at the moment. Touche. OK, um, I'm going to Councillor Pringle, then I'll come to Councillor Panel. Um, is, is mine on? Yeah. Yeah. My my concern is obviously <clears throat> it doesn't seem a big enough area for the amount of lorries and cars they want to get in there. Equally, the impact of the amount of lorries going down that rather narrow road with the um, cars that are always parked upside the road. I just don't think it's feasible and environmentally as well with all that traffic going down that road. Has, has there been anything... Is it, is it the actual access road that you're referring to? Um, so Ermington Road or the actual... Yeah. Right. Um, well, that road is a district distributor road currently, um, and it's signed to take HGVs and all types of traffic on the network. So I don't think we can distinguish between um, the minimum extra traffic this proposal will generate and, and what's already using the network. It would be quite a, a weak argument to, to take. Um, Obviously, there's parking on that road. Um, it is high demand during the day, not just because of this site, but mainly also historically because of the industrial estates in the area. Um, to ban any of that parking would probably exacerbate problems elsewhere. So it's, it's a bit of a difficult one. Thank you. Councillor Panel. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, just nice to ask why the county feels that pedestrian access is so important now when no pedestrian access was provided, as we've heard, um, for staff or visitors to the recycling centre, which the county built, what, three, about three years ago? What is the difference? Um, the, the county, as the highway authority, did raise the request at that time. Um, unfortunately, we were ignored. Is that by South Hands you ignored? No, that was by Devon County Council planning office. Oh, <laughs> well, you ignored yourself. <laughs> Thank you. That's very illuminating. <laughs> yeah, Councillor Foss. Yeah, I'd like to ask. Quite, much has been made of having this walkway so that people could cycle and walk to work. How many of the staff actually are within cycling and walking distance? I suspect it's not that many, from what I from what I know. Um, so. You know, it's somewhat of a red herring. Um, and, I mean, we got the opportunity here to help a company that's in trouble with parking. We know that. There's always been cars parked outside of the well-known garage there. They've always been there. 
Um, and any idea that this is going to alter the flow of traffic in and out is a load of nonsense because they're doing it anyway. They're going to work every day. Um, and it's just getting them off the road and making it safe. I would have thought far safer. Um, but, you know, as for having a walkway because so they can walk there and talking about shower rooms after cycling miles and all the rest of it, I think it's, it's stretching the point, to be quite blunt. Yeah, get, can, just on that, just can I remind members that, that um, helping out a company that's in trouble is not a material planning consideration. Um, this must be decided on planning matters and planning matters alone. Um, it's a change of use to a car park. The objection, I, I believe, is that they're saying that in order to access that car park, you'd, you'd have safely, you'd have to drive there. And therefore, that is not uh, not encouraging walking or cycling to work. Um, you, you've had the view from the planning officer that, I mean, obviously, we've um, the county itself has, has, has not taken its own advice on, on the earlier transfer station. Our officers are saying that, that although they accept that, they don't think that that is strong enough to refuse this application. Members, you have to decide whether you feel that the change of use is acceptable or not with, with, without that particular pedestrian access or cycleway. Um, Councillor Long. Jim, um, can I just ask the uh, Charlotte, there's one of the objections to Ivebridge Town Council was uh, no allocation for staff parking associated with the introduction of Lorry Park. I'm assuming with the clarification, that particular point has been addressed clearly. Yeah, we, we got this um, this extra layout kind of in response to, to all the objections that raise issues about the parking. Right. Any more questions for Mr Jackson? Um, no, in which case we will move on to speakers. Um, right now, I'll bring that up. Chairman, I didn't actually get an answer to my question about how is it known how many people walk or cycle to work. Again, I, I, I look. It's a bit of chicken and egg, there, is, isn't it? I mean, what they're saying is they'd like to encourage people to walk and cycle there. The fact that no one does at the moment, or very few, if they if there was a a, a safe access, and there might be more. So I don't think that, that again. The policy is you want to encourage walking and cycling. Um, I don't think we can say no one does at the moment and therefore they don't need to. The, the interpretation from the county is that they should be doing that. Um, and they don't feel that this application um, does enough in that in, in that regard. So um, I don't think numbers is 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 relevant. I'm, would my, be my, I mean, I don't think anyone would here would know anyway, if, if I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyway, I'll move on to the speakers now. Um, and yeah, I've got uh, Mr. Baston. Hello, Mr. Baston. Welcome. Thank you for coming and speaking to us. Um, what will happen is you'll have uh, three minutes to, to, to make your case and then members of the committee may want to ask you a few questions for clarification. Um, so over to you, sir. Thank you. Do you want mine again? <laughs> no, I've just, no. Mine. I'm on now. Oh, it's on now. Thanks, Richard. Okay, so just press this one. Okay. Councillors, this application has been brought forward to relocate waste collection vehicles from the Ivory Bridge waste transfer station to the application site. It will also relocate up to 40 staff cars from parking on Ermington Road and the access road to the waste transfer station by providing car parking during the day. It is important to note that the waste collection vehicles and staff cars 
are already using the road, no, road network and no additional vehicles are being proposed in this application. A number of objections have been received, the majority of which are from members of the Tennis and Courts Club. As the committee report refers, I met representatives of the club in November 2021, and by this date, the problems that the objections referred to had already been resolved. SCC staff have not been parking in the tennis club car park for several months now, following a combined presentation regarding where to park and where not to park from SCC management and South Ham's officers. The relocation of waste collection vehicles will allow operations at the waste transfer station to proceed more efficiently and will reduce vehicle standing time, leading to improved service delivery and a more sustainable operation. Waste collection vehicles that return in the afternoon and evening will no longer have to queue on the access road to the waste transfer station while other vehicles manoeuvre and then park. This will improve traffic load flow at the entrance to the waste transfer station and to and from the fire station. The service road to the application site has been designed to carry loaded and unloaded HGVs and cars. The road is well laid out, tarmacked and appropriately signed and lined. The junction with Irmington Road is a modern Belmouth junction with good visibility in both directions. Waste collection vehicles will emerge directly onto Irmington Road and proceed to their collection rounds along established routes. And of course, they will need to travel along residential roads to provide the waste collection service. Staff cars and lorries will not interact with recycling centre traffic in the morning and there will be limited interaction in the evening as waste collection vehicles will return and cars leave the application site over a period of three and a half to four hours. Councillors, the challenges the applicant has experienced in delivering the waste collection services service to business and residents is well documented. This application, together with proposed changes to the waste transfer oper operation, will allow significant improvements in service delivery. The waste collection service will be delivered more efficiently, more sustainably and more safely, which can only benefit businesses and residents in South Hams. Councillor, I would ask you to approve this application so that these benefits can be realised at the earliest opportunity. Thank you for listening. Thank you, sir. Members, any questions? Councillor Abbott. Good afternoon, uh, or something. Uh, I'm Councillor Abbott. Um, the blue shaded area here, is it just indicative? You're, you're going to have a banksman anyway. Uh, but this is not a, a detailed way of how you're going to get vehicles in and out, nor how they're going to avoid uh, the, the staff cars and, and, and the lorries, which in another diagram covers the whole of the site. It's not meant to be a specific parking plan because there is no tarmac on site. It's hard standing. So when I submitted the plan, I did talk to Charlotte and say, that I was reluctant for it to be formalised because we can't lay it out. But what we did do is we looked at the actual parking size, um, the ability of cars to come in and get out with it, without being blocked in by other vehicles. Although I think that where you have control over the staff and parking, you can double park. So this is a minimum potential um, car parking space. And what we also looked at, I didn't track it because there's no site infrastructure. It's just completely open. So I would normally, we normally would do vehicle tracking on junctions and the like, but I didn't think that it was appropriate to do it here because it is so open and there's no site infrastructure other than the perimeter fencing. And what this site is, is designed to do is that not all the HGVs will cover all of the site. When we put in the parking plan arrangement for HGVs, which was incidentally copied and pasted onto there because they are a pro forma size of vehicle, um, that, that was also indicative. The exact number of HGVs that would be parked on here is not set at the moment. It, it would need to be looked at in terms of how many vehicles are relocated from one site to the other. And so 
the, the site is a transition site. What happens is in the morning, as staff arrive, they leave on their vehicles, which leaves space then for the other staff arriving to then park and leave on their vehicles. So it transitions from one to the other. But what I did look at when I did this plan was that cars are able to park in the north of the site with impact, without impacting where lorries are parked. They park there and then they move to the south. And as the lorries leave, the cars then take up those spaces. So that would be controlled by a banksman, as the report um, mentions. So it has been well thought out well considered and have looked at how the flow of traffic would happen because if you can see on that centralized blue block i've taken out that corner piece there that is specifically to allow a lorry to come in through the access go around there and then come through there to park in the south and then they decamp leaving their cars would then leave space for the HGVs, the rest of the HGVs to come in. And remember, this does happen over three and a half to four hours. It's not a sudden flow of traffic back to the site and cars leave in. It's a trickle of traffic because those HGVs um, complete their rounds over its, over its staggered throughout the day. Hence why, um, you know, we've also looked at, and I mentioned it there, extending the opening hours on the waste transfer station. So there is a bigger window to allow HGVs to return to that facility. So they're not all concertinaed into a short space of time, so which actually causes a problem. The waste transfer facility. There, will be a, there will be a split, but these are two separate planning units. We are not, um, we are not applying for, for planning on this site so that staff can move from the waste transfer station to here. It's about relocating them completely from that site to here. Not all of them, but a proportion of the traffic on the waste transfer station to make that waste transfer station operate more efficiently. It's about providing that extra space. Yesterday, I walked from the waste transfer... Oh. Thank you, Karen. Yesterday, I walked from the waste transfer station up into Ivy Bridge, and, and there's a potential employability of 9,000 people, I guess, there to, uh, to walk down. Are you content with um, pedestrian access in through that corner? But the gate on that corner has been provided because there is a legal requirement on the landowner to provide a gate. It's, it's to do with the um, national highways and the slip road. It's not to do with us. We, he has to provide that. And that's why when I've come up with this parking plan legally, and I know legal is not a, a planning matter, but it explains this point. We are not allowed to obstruct that access. So that's why that gate is. We haven't requested that gate. The only access to this site will be via the surface road. So we, we are not intending staff to travel from the waste transfer station to this site. This site is meant to be a separate planning unit. There's considerable car sharing happening now after discussions by FCC management and South Ham's officers. So there's considerable car sharing. So we're not expecting staff to have to walk to this site, hence why we're not supportive of a footway being put in. And, and further, in terms of foot, notwithstanding that, in terms of the footway, it would be incredibly complicated because we would need two seven eight agreements with um, the highways department in Devon, we would need a 278 agreement with national highways. That would be incredibly expensive in, or in, in order to um, get those legal agreements in place. We don't know what the infrastructure structure might be that they require to cross the slip road, because ideally you do not want to pedestrians crossing the slip road. Um, and so therefore we're, we're not, you know, I'm not I discussed this with Richard and I didn't feel that there was justification for a footway to be um, installed and it would not, it would be very expensive and complicated to um, to put that in. And I think as, as Charles just said, planning wise, that, that can't be conditioned. Um, yeah, Councillor Robert, yeah, um, Councillor Panel and then Councillor Pringles, did you want to, no, no, just Councillor Panel. Yeah, you've, you've just taken his speaker away. Yeah, can I just clarify the, 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 the gate in the corner, which you say is a highways requirement. Is that gate locked or unlocked? It's locked. 
it's locked, but it's a requirement there's a gate there, but it doesn't have to be unlocked. Yeah. What's the re why, why is it there then? It, I, I don't know. <laughs> As Richard's Highway's response, first response said, um, it is not to be used. Okay, mystery deepens on that. Um, members, any more questions? I mean, I think you've answered my questions, and that was, you know, would you be interested in doing a pedestrian footway? And the answer was quite categorical, no. Um, so members have to, I mean, in a way that was, um, that's not what was before us anyway. So, uh, so, right. Thank you very much, sir. Um, and now it's the, um, town council representative. Hello. Hello, is it Councillor Hladic? Haladki. Haladki. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Councillor Haladki, um, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, you've got um, three minutes and then members of the committee may want to ask questions for clarification. So over to you. Thank you. Good morning. So I'm speaking on behalf of the planning committee of Ivy Bridge Town Council. So we're objecting to this planning application because endeavouring to solve the inadequacies of the failing waste recycling centre uh, service, members feel that the introduction of a lorry park would only exacerbate other problems currently being experienced. There is already insufficient staff parking allocated to the FCC waste transfer station approved in November 2019. And the nearby tennis centre and football club car park are suffering from their car park being abused. Although having just heard um, what Mr. Baston has said, that could possibly be uh, slightly alleviated. Although I think there might be a bit of disingenuity going on. Um, this is also creating congestion on the road network including the inner road leading from the waste transfer station shared with the fire service. Members fear that the introduction of an additional lorry park to the mix will intensify the congestion and could impede emergency service vehicles. I would also say that since uh, the pandemic started, the pedestrian access along Ermington Road, the footfall has increased enormously. Um, more people are walking. Um, it's not that they feel they have to walk anywhere, it's the feel that they're choosing to walk. Um, I do have a bit saying about there is no allocation for staff parking associated with the introduction of a lorry park, um, which is a clear lack of associated infrastructure essential to support this application. However, it would seem that that has now possibly been um, answered, but uh, listening to Councillor Abbott's points. Um, I think that there is still some questions on that. So the committee members have assumed that the new land use classification will be so generous in the change of use application. So it's not clear how parking requirements for non-residential use of this land would be calculated. Approval of this application would impact and have a further detrimental effect on the sports and recreation facilities for the town. The Ivy Bridge Neighbourhood Plan places great emphasis on enhancing the town's reputation for sport. However, this is hampered when the parking allocated for the town's sporting facilities is restricted by employees from neighbouring sites. It would cause further conflict with the function of the current sporting facilities, therefore contravening JLP Development 27 green and play spaces. Members were also concerned that no travel plan or transport assessment has been included with the application, which does nothing to allay fears over highway safety 
and the potential for minor roads in the town becoming rat runs, for example, Walkham Lane. Approval would be a contravention of JLP Development 29.7. In summing up, this application and its lack of associated infrastructure and travel plan transport assessment fails to satisfy members on the grounds of highway safety, the potential to restrict fire emergency vehicles and the harmful impact for sports facilities in the town and also pollution with more people walking. It is in conflict with the joint local plan and the Ivy Bridge neighbourhood plan and therefore neighbours were unanimous in objecting to the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, members, any questions for Councillor Hladchke? Any questions? No? In which case, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Right, um, I'll now move to the ward members. Um, Councillor Pringle, do you want to go first? Councillor uh, Abbott. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't know that I had intended to speak actually at this point. Uh, I, am I, I'm quite happy with the way the questions are being asked and answered. Uh, and my understanding of this is it seems an important part of the delivery of the waste surface and I'm minded to accept it as it is. OK, um, I, I'm going to repeat myself here. I, this isn't about whether it's going to help deliver the waste service. It's, it's got to be judged on its planning merits. Um, and 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 the main issue here is that there's an objection from highways saying that if you provide a car park like this, you should provide pedestrian access, which allows people to drive or cycle to that car park in order to access their work vehicles. Um, that isn't there. Our planning officer says that that that, that actually they don't think that, that is a uh, overriding reason for a refusal. Um, but I, what I don't want to have is the fact that this is going to help our recycling or what have you, because that is not a planning consideration. Um, but anyway, having said that, uh, Councillor Pringle, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I just want to firstly, obviously, with um, part of it being for cars, that will alleviate a lot of the parking and the problems with <clears throat> um Parking tennis centre. They do still. I was there Monday, six till seven. I go to the tennis centre, and they were parking there then. Um, but also, I think with regard to the um, access for people being able to cycle, there are a lot of people that want to cycle and walk to work nowadays. So I, I do, I do think that is part of a, you know, part of it. But other than that, with they've alleviated the issues with the with the parking, I would say with the with the car park. But it's it's to me the problem is the walk walkway. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um members, Councillor Kemp, did you want to um, say something? <laughs> yeah, just a quick question that I just saw here. Um it says no fuel intercept interceptors proposed so any leaks will go into the drainage um what fuel are we talking are they refueling on on that site as well then no so what's that all about then well if, if you've got vehicle park there it might no that's not, Has it... that's not the point. so what leaks are we talking about there was a there was a misunderstanding that that um, is from the town council, I think. Uh, yes. and, and the answer was uh, that um, FCC are uh, not doing uh, any remedial work to their vehicles, no maintenance on the site. So right. Okay. They're arguing it's not relevant. Sorry, am I treading on your toes now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. So I think the thing is, is it's just purely for parking, nothing else. And therefore, right. that's not a relevant point. Oh, um, okay. In respect of planning. Okay. Um, and the other thing that I wondered about was lighting. 
because there's a lot of talk about lighting being required on these sites for security purposes. So am I right in thinking that cameras can't record in the dark unless they're an infrared camera? Because there's lots of okay. industrial yeah. sites that have yeah. lots of lighting on all night. So I'll, I'll go to, to Ms. Harahane. Yeah. She... Um, Thank I've, you. One of the recommended conditions is that any external lighting, has the details need to be agreed with us first before it's installed. So um, they've not said whether lighting is needed or not, but if it is, we will be able to look right. at the details and make sure it's kind of proportionate. Okay, and um, and will you be able to enforce that then? Because um, it, I'm seeing the skies lit up all over the place at the moment. Yeah, they'll, they'll have to submit a formal discharge of conditions application so we will get the details. And then if they obviously don't accord with those details, then we can get enforcement involved. Right, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. Councillor Panel. Thank you, Chair. We, we've heard that um, this application is not going to lead to any increase in lorry movements because they already go to uh, the waste transfer station. Um, it's going to provide somewhere for them to park at night. It's, not, it's going to alleviate the, the car parking problem, which I'm very well aware of, in Ermington Road and the adjoining sites. Um, and I don't see how this is going to make things worse for the fire station because, it, in a way, it's going to take some lorry movements away from that um, exit. So I'm hoping that uh, certainly at the least the, the fire station exit won't be um, made uh, won't be won't be made worse, and I think it will probably be improved. Uh, I'm therefore prepared to second Councillor Abbott's proposal for uh, ex uh, approval. I think you're the proposing. <laughs> oh, I thought you said. Well, I, so I, you, so I thought you sort of. Had, he sort of. He didn't. But so are you will you. you I'm you, happy. You'll propose proposing um, conditional approval as per the officer recommendation. Yes. Um, uh, and uh, just add that um, as regards the, I understand the, um, and I applaud the highways um, concern about pedestrian access. I, I do think we should be looking. Uh, to provide better pedestrian and cyclist access. But having heard that the county themselves ignored highways when they asked for it on the recycling centre, I think I, I don't see how we can um, demand that it should be installed on this instance. Thank you. Councillor Rowe. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I'm happy to second the proposal for approval. I think everything that needs to be said has already been said, so I won't add anything further. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowe. Councillor Hodgson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I actually feel that it's actually important that we do start to support more people being able to cycle or walk to work. And while on the one hand, I can see the limitations of this site and the mixture of HGVs and pedestrians and cyclists is never ideal. But I do think there should be a way forward, and I think we should acknowledge it. And while I, I support the concerns about highways not supporting their own application previously on this, I don't think we should let that cloud us as to what we're trying to achieve here. I would say, as a cyclist, that you don't always need a shower when you actually get off your bike before you get in a lorry. But, I mean, I don't drive a lorry, so maybe it's different when you drive lorries. But um, I would just say that I think it, we should support the highway's objection on this because... Otherwise, we're making a rough round back in future applications where we say, well, it was all right for them, but we do it elsewhere. I think we've got to be consistent. And if we want to see more sustainable transport supported, particularly for local people working and being able to get to their workplace safely by, by foot or by bike, then I think we need to sort of start implementing that and the decisions that we make. And I, I think this one maybe should just be sent back, have that amendment made and then come back again. Thank you, Councillor Hodgson. Mr Weimer. Just, um, I absolutely understand the point around pedestrian. I'm not sure why what's been proposed would stop cyclists going to the site. Because you wouldn't, you don't need, I wouldn't, I don't see that you need a pavement to stop cyclists going there. I used to live not far from that, just down, literally down there. And there's always, there's often cyclists on that, that road. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure how it stops people cycling to work. Mr. Well, uh, Mr. Jackson, just... No, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine.
Can't hear you. Yeah, it's gone off now. It's uh, on now. The, 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 they're going to be having team meetings there, all sorts of things um, as per their daily work life. Um, and um, what the footway will allow is them to park or if, if they wanted to cycle, they could put their bikes in either location if there was facilities provided at this car park as well um, for cycle parking, they could do that. Um, and then walk to the shower and walk back and start their start their rounds. So w without the footway, that's very difficult because you've not got the safe and suitable walking facility. And it's not going to be light at certain times of the day when some of these in the winter, when some of these people are turning up to work in the early hours of the morning. And I would suggest it's uh, not safe to be expecting them to walk on the, the tarmac carriageway. And it's not an ideal situation to have them walking on a muddy grass, slippery verge. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hodgson. Yeah, just to reply back to Mr Weimer's comments regarding um, um, cycling. Um, when you've got a lot of HGVs, they don't mix well with cycling. It's just, it becomes unsafe, and especially when you haven't got pedestrian routes. It's it's much more a kind of a big vehicle. So I just think if you're going to be doing stuff for pedestrians, make it multi-use for cyclists too, and then it actually goes both. Okay. Um, any more for any more? Um, Councillor Rabbit. So we it's been proposed and seconded, but. But may these may that go along with conditions so that uh, well, it depends what the conditions are uh, the, such as a provision of a mixed cycle and pedestrian route. Uh, I don't think so. We've already heard from the applicant that they're not accepting that. Would a uh, I have seen um, at appeal inspectors take the view that a Grampian condition is appropriate on the highway if it falls on entirely within the highway. Mr Weimer, do you want to... My concern is I don't think we have a, a plan of exactly where a footway is going to go, so I'm not sure we are sure that it's entirely within the highway. I think if, if members feel that a footway is a necessity, then I think the applicant, uh, given that the, applic the applicant has clearly said they want to determine as submitted and they're not going to do it, I think the only, the, it'd be, um, it really ought to be determined. And if you feel a uh, footway is necessary, it should be refused on the basis that it hasn't, isn't providing a footway. Yeah, I, I'm, I agree with that. I think if you, if, if you think the footway is absolutely overriding, then you should, you should vote to refuse it. Um, from my own point of view, I, I, I totally agree with all, you know, that, that we should be encouraging people to cycle and walk to work as much as possible. I would say one of the one of the sort of mitigating factors in here, we already have a work thing here without the cycling and pedestrian. And what this car park is going to do is actually to alleviate some of the car parking issues that they've got in and around that area. And as such, in my view, that's enough to override the requirement. Um, Notwithstanding that, I mean, on other occasions, I will definitely be supporting county's view that there should be that they should be supporting sustainable transport. Um, but that's that, that's where I stand on that one. Anyway, right, members. So we're going to go to it's being proposed and seconded for conditional approval as per the officer recommendation. Can I have a show of hands for those in favour of approval, please? That's 11 for approval. Thank you, chair. And those against? One against. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. That application is approved. And thank you, Mr. Jackson. Good to see you. Yeah, you got off quite lightly today. <laughs> <laughs> this must be the New Year spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, right, members. Um, Thank you for that. We'll now move on to agenda item seven, which is appeals. Um, Mr. Weimer. Thank you, Chair. The the only um, the only appeals on there today are appeals that have been made rather than appeal decisions, unless I'm looking at an older report, and I don't think I am. The only thing that I would like 
to report, however, which is of interest, and Mrs. Foles may want to, to come in um, if, I get, if I've got anything wrong. Okay. Members will recall that the council was successful in defending a certificate of lawfulness appeal at Seymour Drive in Dartmouth. Um, earlier this week, we received a letter from the inspectorate basically awarding us full costs. We didn't apply for them. The inspector basically said, contacted the applicant. They haven't responded. I think they, I, they clearly didn't have a case. Um, it, what put the, was the it was a certificate of lawful what? continuation of a planning application, so continuation of de development not in accordance with the condition yeah. for members of the Well, yeah, I think it's about 12 extra houses on a piece of uh, a copse that they came and chopped the copse down and then uh, yeah. caused a massive hoo-ha in Dartmouth. Thank you. But, but so the inspector, the inspect, because in, um, a couple of three years ago, the, the the rules changed and inspectors are able to award costs to either party, irrespective of whether anybody's applied for them. And this is, however, this is the first time in my experience that an inspector has awarded costs without either party applying. We didn't apply for costs and we've got our full costs awarded, um, which is a very pleasant surprise. No, yeah, good news. I mean, members, any comments uh, on that one? I mean, obviously, the other ones have all just been lodged. I mean, the one thing I would say is that I think that what that illustrates is that as a council, we should be more ready to, to go for costs on appeals. Uh, and that what we've, look, we've got here four appeals that have been lodged. If there is a particular member that thinks that that is an outrageous appeal to lodge and that they've got no case for it, then we should we should encourage officers to go for costs. Um, I mean, I think I thought the Brutus Centre in Totnes was a classic example where they did, they knew that they didn't have a case to to appeal on, and we would have won that hands down if that had gone to appeal the original one, uh, and we should have gone for costs. So that that appeal has been withdrawn. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying is is that we must say right from the beginning if you lodge an appeal. And we're defending it. We're going to go for costs because, and and I would hope that on the Seymour Drive one that we advertise the fact that we've been awarded costs out there, so that developers begin to realise that we're not a soft touch here in the South Downs, and that we we can give as good as we get. Well, well, well. I mean, that's what we want to change. I think we want to, you know, so developers think, oh, well, we'll appeal it because. What I've seen is that they do they do an appeal, not because they think they're going to win the appeal, but they know that what the inspector says, they then just need to put in a planning application dealing with the two points that the inspector reads, and, that, and then they're going to get win their next application. And so I think it's sort of speculative that they do it. And I think we should have, we should say, OK, you can do that, but we're going to take costs off you. That's, that's my own view. I just think we're a bit too cautious in, in, in going for costs on these appeals. Chair, uh, if I can, um, I'll just I'll take that on board. I'll take that on board. Um, I, I said officers do uh, speak to me when they think there is a genuine um, application for costs, and uh, and we do support them. Um, uh, this this is a new one, and I, I'm pleas pleasantly surprised. And there was a reason why we didn't give costs in this um, in this one, which was regarding the plans. Uh, but I, I'm I'm very happy with the result, and if that does encourage us to do cost, then I'm more than happy that happy that we do so. Where we follow the cost rules about uh, whether their their behaviour is unreasonable, and that's what we need to demonstrate, and um, that their behaviour is unreasonable before we go straight to cost. And again, I was I wouldn't want to make it as a matter of course because I think it does then you get a reputation, it does lose weight. So, but where there is grounds, I certainly support that. Yeah, no, that, no, I agree, and it shouldn't be on everyone. But I, 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 I can't remember when we actually did apply for costs in an appeal ever. We, we have done a few recently. Yeah. We've taken, we've taken on board. What can we do? Said, and we are good. But, but, but where it's just, so, if for argument's sake, it's a household application, and it's a subjective 
Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. Yeah, quite, quite, I quite agree, quite agree. But I think, I mean, like, say on the Brutus one, they were refusing to do any affordable. They weren't, you know, they hadn't put enough detail. All the things. There was, it was just massively wrong. No, but that was later on when we got four hundred grand on them. Um, right. Uh, I think that's it on appeals. Um, agenda item eight. Um, <laughs> it's all right. You're not missing much. Yeah. There we are. We're on to agenda item eight, which is the um, uh, which is the major un undetermined major applications. Again, this is really for noting as much as anything, you know. And I say that if there are issues, hopefully you would have raised those with officers beforehand, Councillor Foss. Chairman, as you well know, this is only brought up to, because you were there as, as county councillor um, um, at. Prog war uh, about the fact we've got two applications run side by side, but I see the answer is there. That they'll have, once a, the new one's determined, they'll withdraw the other one. But uh, yeah, I think they're protecting their position, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. But um, you're well aware of the Paris Council I'm talking about and the, the Spanish yeah. Inquisition that we tend yeah. to get every month. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, good. Um, so we're okay for noting that. Um, in which case. That brings us to the end of the committee. Thank you all very much um, and good to see you.